Today's session is actually part of the From Brighton with Love series. And this is a series that includes um, expert panel events, your questions answered sessions like the one we're doing today, and also an export leaders peer network sessions. They're all held virtually, they're all open to all, and they're all free to attend. And I'll be telling you a little bit more at the end about some other things we've got coming up in the series. Um, it is an initiative that's led by Brighton Chamber, but it's supported by Brighton Hove City Council and our event partner, Brighton Hove Economic Partnership. So a big thank you to them. The aim of the programme is to provide Brighton area businesses with expertise that will see them through EU transition and beyond. I'm delighted to be joined by Lev Denker, International Trade Advisor at the DIT today. He's been a guest lecturer at the University of Brighton and an export manager for a successful local exporter. Lev was actually one of the very first people I met when I joined the chamber. And so it's actually very nice to be chatting with him today. And at this 60 minute session, we're going to be discussing what's on offer uh, from the DIT and how businesses can access that support. Lev, let's get started. Lev, is there anything you want to say before I ask you my first question, just by way of introduction of yourself? Because um, I mentioned yeah, that just, you've been just, an ex export manager for a local business, didn't I? Yeah, I, I, I think you, you mentioned I've been quite a long time with, with, with DIT now. Uh, but before that, I was export manager of a company based at New Haven, and then we did classical reproduction, very expensive furniture. Um, so I was an exporter and, and for five, six years there. And so I got the T-shirt and I got the bruises. I've done it. And, uh, you know, I know uh, how uh, interesting, how nice, how good and how challenging it can be. Yes. Yeah. And, but I'm here to help. Great. OK. So um, first of all, I wanted to ask you just to clarify a bit. Um, what is the DIT and also its sister organisation, Newable? OK, DIT, that's short, of course, for Department for International Trade. Uh, there are really three aspects to DIT. One is input investment, which we aren't going to talk today. Uh, the second one is uh, trade negotiations, trade deals, and uh, that's again we are going to talk today. Uh, the third aspect is export, helping UK companies export overseas markets and um, and provide advice, provide support, and provide financial assistance. And that's where I come in. Um, Newable is uh, a company that's delivering DIT services in London and the Southeast. Uh, UK is based into regions. Uh, there are nine regions, for example, uh, in West Midlands, it will be the Chamber of Commerce delivering this service. It's quite a big job to deliver DIT services and companies uh, delivering this and employing people like myself with private service background. Uh, private sector background. Um, in the Southeast, there are about 33 international trade advisors uh, working uh, and delivering this service. Uh, but the Southeast is quite a large area it's Kent, Sussex, Surrey, Hampshire. Uh, I mentioned Newable, and I'm glad you asked. Uh, so it's quite important that people realize that uh, Newable is the organization providing the service here because they will get quite often emails from newable.co.uk and they might think, oh, that's probably, you know, junk and I won't look at it or my straight away go. So it is important. And those emails will invariably be about uh, the webinars, training courses or funding available. It's a very useful information and some of them will be country specific. Uh, obviously, there are quite a, there's quite a lot of information for companies it is a good idea to have a quick look and select, oh, that's relevant for me, I will look at that. So that's, that's in a nutshell, that's DIT and Newable. Um, and just one follow-up question on that is, um, you mentioned that, um, you mentioned about the, the Southeast, but there are DIT people and offices in, in all countries, is that right? So you oversee right. as well, yeah. so they may, 
So a business might start talking with you, but actually might ultimately be dealing yeah. with the DIT in France or America. So, uh, absolutely. So uh, DIT here in the UK, uh, the service is delivered through people like myself and company, as I said, and the big companies will get in touch with me or with my colleagues and we will discuss what can be done, how we can help them. And part of the DIT is overseas based at the British embassies and, and also through partners. For example, there will be uh, uh, the services delivered through the British Chambers of Commerce in South Korea. So if a company is interested in South Korea, I will link them with the chamber over there. And or that will be the DIT in, in the US or etc. So yeah, that is the entry point. So that's just two sides to that. And then of course, having offices over there, people that there's nothing like uh, people based in the country, they know everything about the country, their way around it. And then they've got the first hand knowledge. Great. Okay. Well, that leads very nicely on to my second question, which is, could you talk us through what services the DIT currently offer? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite, quite large, actually. Um, I know. I'm, I'm not going to have time to, to mention all of them, but the idea, I will mention this, this later on to, uh, for companies, look, get in touch with me. I will explain everything in detail to you or what is especially what is relevant to you. And then we, we will help you that way. But again, for the services, let me say there's a few different aspects to that. One is the portal uh, that you attending this uh, webinar will get the link, great.gov.uk. And that is very, very useful. Uh, it has got information about where to export, to how to export, uh, export planning, um, uh, practical information like calculating duty, uh, there are country guides, um, uh, finding uh, overseas uh, distributors, etc. When you get on the portal, there's a menu on the say, menu on the right hand side and a few dashes as usual. Click on that and you will see what's available. Um, so that's, that's very, very useful, uh, that. And then the online courses, for example, companies can do at their own leisure. Uh, the other side is the webinars and training courses we run, uh, DIT. That's mentioned Newble, and you might get emails through you, Newble, about DIT webinars. Again, these are uh, from internationalizing your website, uh, uh, finding agents and distributors, working with them, and export pricing, uh, specific market webinars. And there's especially one for relatively new or new exporters called uh, Winning and Delivering Business Internationally. Uh, that is a two-day, two-half-day course online. And it's very participative, and that covers all aspects of exporting, from starting to export, export planning, strategy, how do I price it, what markets do I look at, uh, how do I find my agents and distributors, uh, what contracts do I need to sign with them, how do I protect my intellectual property, it is there, and it's very participative, it's not just a webinar, you sit and take lots of notes, and then quite often, I'm sure some of you and, you know, including myself, we have been to some of those webinars. You never have time to go back to those notes. But this is very nice, but if you can ask questions, they can make it specific to your, uh, to your company. Um, so I would really advise companies to have a look at that and, you know, uh, and then, then see what's relevant for them. Um, as um, some of the companies have come across, uh, and I mentioned earlier, uh, there's the international trade advisors. Uh, we call them ITAs, dotted around the uh, southeast, and they are really, and they can be, and they are, entry point to uh, the IT services. So, if a company gets in touch with me after the uh, webinar, for example, and discuss their business, I will advise them, help them, connect them with people, see if necessary. So, yeah, and. There are a couple more, like I said, there's 
just pages and pages, a couple more really important ones. One uh, is the Internationalization Fund, IF. That is the funding from the central government to help companies export. And they, that can be up to 9,000 pounds. Okay. And, and that is uh, on a match basis. In other words, if a company spends 18,000, they get back 9,000 pounds grant. Uh, the criteria, obviously, uh, that. And uh, the criteria is SME, they, you need to be an SME. Uh, your turnover needs to be around 500,000 or you're a high growth company with good export potential. And you are working with an international trade advisor like myself. So the idea is get in touch with your trade advisor, speak to them and see if you qualify, if you, and then how to address that, how to join that. And then they will help you to formulate an action plan and the actions between the IT and the client qualify for, the, for this grant uh, funding. It's quite straightforward, quite sort of, you know, uh, and you know, quite useful. And the funding can be spent on things like market visit. Okay, it's a little difficult now to go overseas maybe, but you know, uh, there are virtual um, uh, exhibitions, for example, and some of them they do charge. So you can pay for that. Uh, you can translate your website. You can internationalize your website. Um, so yeah, uh, you can attend exhibitions. Uh, you need the service of a, for example, VAT expert to advise you how to structure mm. your VAT in the in, in Europe or register it where, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can use the service of a, a consultancy in the UK or overseas, and that qualifies. That's quite a long list. The the the, the list for actions that don't qualify is much much shorter. <laughs> Um, and there's one more, if I can mention that, Sarah, is England's finest. That is a special for food and drink products. Uh, there's a portal free of charge uh, for UK companies. They can join and their products will be displayed on that portal. It's visible to companies and distributors promoted, communicated by our DIT offices overseas. By the way, the webinars I mentioned earlier, the training course, the, they are all free of charge. I was going to ask you that. So the, yes. the ones you mentioned for, for people starting out, they're all free? Yes, that's, that's completely right. free, yeah. And um, just one final thing on, on, on the services. Can you say something about the e-commerce platforms that um, companies could, could use? I gather there's quite an, a number. Yes, there is, and it can be quite bewildering uh, which one I use in which country. For example, what is good in, in this country uh, would be, uh, would just wouldn't be relevant in China or other markets. Uh, when you look at the figures, for example, in Germany, uh, the uh, e-commerce is booming. It's, it's, it's just gone, you know, beyond all expectations. Uh, but which one do I use? Uh, on our portal, you can see uh, which ones would be more relevant. Uh, there are entry points, you can enter what uh, product you do uh, or, or service and uh, the country you are interested in, and it can give you that, that information. You can get in touch with me. I can connect you to all, some of our experts in London who specialize on e-commerce, and they can discuss it with you. Um, and I, or if necessary, I can link companies with the partners we work with. I mentioned some of the services are delivered by our partners. For example, in China, there's China Britain Business Council, and they've got an excellent e-commerce expert. And I, I, what I would do, I would connect you with, uh, with them and you speak to them. They would say, yes, use this. And these are the conditions is how to join and this is how to look out for. Quite often with these e-commerce platforms, you need to look at you know, what is the expenditure, what's, you know, commission they take, what, what are the conditions, etc., And also how successful they are likely to be with your product. Yeah. Some of them specialize. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. 
I feel like I'm giving you a job interview here, Lev. Um, next, <laughs> next question. Um, could you say a bit about how a DIT trade advisor works with a business? Well, that's, that's, that's really straightforward, like we are doing now. You, for example, you, uh, you will introduce a company to me and uh, I will get in touch with them or they will get in touch with me. We will discuss their business, look at their business. If they are not exporting already, look at, is it suitable to export what they do? Uh, and we will look at their resources, resources in terms of uh, financial, but also um, uh, people. Do, do, do they have enough time, people, to, 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 to make justice to export? Exporting can be a little challenging, especially at the beginning, to enter and to get to know. So that will take a little bit of time. Can the company allow that? Do they have time to do that? And then also to start doing a bit of export planning strategy, uh, look at markets, which markets and where and when necessary, like we, I mentioned before, uh, connect them to our overseas uh, partners. For example, in Europe, uh, we formed about a year ago, uh, DIT Europe Hub. Rather than going to individual markets, if you've got Italy, France, Germany, and Finland, you're interested. And then we can connect it to the hub and they will find the right people for each country, those people get in touch with you and they can start advising you. In some cases, they might very well say to you, look, don't even think about it, either for this might be so saturated for that kind of product, which will eliminate you wasting your time in a market and looking at other markets where there are opportunities. So that's on a day-to-day -day basis. It can be quite informal. We are very approachable. <laughs> hopefully, as you can see. And uh, people will get, for example, my email after this, they can get in touch with me and happy to talk to them. It, does, it doesn't de de uh, matter what size they are. They can be quite small, you know, starting up or very experienced, very large. Right, so, so they can pick your brains, you, you'll do some sort of diagnostics with them and then sort of make Absolutely. an action plan. Yeah. Um, they, they can pick my brains, there's much left at the moment but you know but yeah of course i'm more than happy you know uh, to speak to them and to be diagnostic with them and there are there are a number of um, you mentioned there are there are lots of trade advisors like yourself locally yeah. and we know obviously estelle who we've worked with as well yes. at brighton chamber so does it matter which trade advisor you find yourself with um should you go to a specific one about a specific um, not, not really. I mean, we do, do one, we all work together and uh, we are sort of in, 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 in sectors, sector segments. Uh, I mean, more consumer uh, products. But I've got a lot of clients that I work with, they are not in that sector. Uh, if and when client needs a very specific knowledge, uh, we will sort of pass them on, refer them to our, one of our colleagues to speak to. Either in the South East or at the head office in London. So in that case, yeah. it doesn't really matter. So yeah, it, that's so good to you know. Talk to, uh, to an advisor, get help. The message is just get in touch and then you'll take exactly. it from there. Um, exactly. And um, what are the DIT's extended networks in the UK and across the world? And how can businesses benefit from these extended networks? Um, as I mentioned, we work with uh, uh, DIT uh, offices, the IT managers and advisors in at the embassies and partners. And uh, they are obviously very knowledgeable about their market, uh, rules, regulations, uh, entry requirements, um, maybe duty. And then and also, probably more importantly, uh, if all these are green lighted, if you like, uh, finding uh, an agent, distributor, or retailers they can sell through. So all these aspects can be and are covered by uh, uh, by our partners and the IT advisors overseas. And then they do run country-specific webinars which uh, the, our companies will get notification of. So someone, for example, from the Scandinavian markets, they will get together and they will give it a webinar about the what products or services are uh, 
uh, to sell in that market. So it's probably quite a good way, for example, of maybe finding out about the rules and regulations of a, of a particular country or maybe the suitability of a product or a service, you know, because you would then could tap into the local expertise as well. Yeah. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Yes, that's absolutely. For example, yesterday we, we did a sort of three way uh, uh, sort of link uh, uh, with Ireland. And then one of the wine producers in the UK is interested in Ireland. And we were asking them uh, English wine, how does it sell there? Who sells it? What's the price range? Uh, you know, what are the rules to get alcohol into Ireland, etc. Yeah, yeah. Good example. And could you give us some examples of perhaps how businesses have used um, the DIT to support their, their support themselves to grow by by starting to export? I mean, what are sort of what are the kinds of ways that you might um, you might get involved and and along the journey with the, with a business? You okay. Mentioned, yeah, you I... mentioned people right at the beginning of their journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are quite a few. There, there, there's one, for example, I always remember a company in, in, in Hastings, and, and they were interested in, uh, in exporting their services, and they, pro they were providing services to uh, hospitals and, 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 and care sort of centres and places like that, and they were doing very well in the UK. And they were very interested in exporting. I went to see them and looked at them as I discussed it and advised them. Uh, it was a good service to export, but they weren't ready. And we discussed sort of in a nice way what they needed to do to get ready. And then these are the things. And, and in between, we had a chat with the other chat with them. This day they rang me. And about a year later, we started exporting. And they were very successful after that. Very, very successful. One of the uh, problems was very basic. Uh, they didn't have the capacity. Uh, so the person who was running it would be servicing UK as well as overseas, looking for new clients. And I said, there's no way you are going to be able to do that. And if you start doing it at the expense of your UK market, don't. Because UK is your bread and butter. That's your business. And before you know it, if you start try to export and start traveling, you said, People business this. You've got to go and see people and visit them, you know, when you can, of course. And uh, you, if you are doing that, and if you neglect your UK business, and suddenly it will run away from you. And, and usually clients, they don't ring you, they say, well, we are not getting the service, we used to, we are going to go away. They just go quite often, you know, or they sort of reduce their business. So, I mean, but about a year later, they started exporting. They, he recruited people, invested a little bit, and, and then he's doing very well, really, really well. I'm so pleased, you know, it gives, it gives us, it, it's trade advisors, a lot of pleasure to see that. And this is where the, the internationalization grant um, fund um, yeah. can help as well, can't it, um, that we talked about earlier? Can, 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 can help, yeah, because in some markets, for example, for research and finding uh, um, customers and, and distributors, there may be a charge from some of the partners, and this can pay for half of it. Yeah, and, and thinking about the 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 future of exporting and importing and, and Brighton. Um, I, I mean, I, I know you're, you're involved in a lot of um, businesses that export, you know, manufacturing and products, but in Brighton, we're quite, we have quite a lot of um, service-based exporters, yeah. knowledge-based exporters um, compared to other cities. And I wondered if you saw that being an area of, of growth for Brighton, because I know, that, you know, for example, there are local PR companies who surprised themselves with how um, successful they've been outside of the UK. And, yeah. and, and also we heard on our panel event recently from a company that is involved in employee, employee engagement. And they, yeah. uh, I think more than half of their work is, yeah. is, in, the, yeah. is, in, the, is in America. 
Yeah, Miss, the, um, the service sector is quite a large percentage of export, actually. A lot of uh, people, they don't realize that they think there's got to be a, a product Physical that product. they are exporting. Uh, and then when you say, oh, service is the last you know, part of the export, they say, oh, yes, of course, because it's financial, legal, and et cetera. No, it's not. I mean, there are a lot of creative agencies. I know two, especially one, that was got a very good contract uh, providing to the U.S., uh, that's web design and direct mail. Uh, and then you say, oh, hold on, you know, uh, in marketing, which they say, didn't marketing was, was born in the US. They started, they all into it. And, you know, uh, yes, but the reason they come here is all very fresh, different. And they, that, that differentiates their offer, their product from the crowd in their own market. So yes, yeah, I mean, people are looking for ideas and it's all sort of international and global now to a large extent anyway. And then especially if you're a PR agency, if you've got expertise, especially for companies who are operating in the UK, they don't know UK as well as we do, or the PR company or the design agency would do. So it's very useful for them to have someone on the ground and to help them. Yeah, that's... Um, well, the, the, the advice from the um, employee engagement company was that actually UK companies have a very good reputation abroad and um, are, in, are in demand if you can get yourself yes. in front yeah. of people. Um, yes, 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 absolutely. And then and UK companies, they are uh, seen as sort of quite straightforward and uh, uh, it's nice to deal with um, in, in some sort of offers from some of the markets, uh, they are so quite exaggerated. And we all know sort of, you know, uh, the Italian way of communicating, oh, bella, bella, and, you know, and it, whereas the British would be much more sort of subdued and they will just put across, the, you know, the, the salient points of uh, the product or the service. Uh, one thing I would sort of encourage uh, companies is uh, be more forward coming in than, than confident. Uh, I mean, if there are, say, in an exhibition, there, is, there are three booths, and then one is US, one is Italian, and the next one is, is UK product or service. The first one, the Italians will say, bella, bella, you know? and then the, the, the US will say, it's fantastic, it's beautiful, it will do this, it will do that. You get, you go to the British one, you'll say, oh, our product is quite good, actually. It's quite, <laughs> oh, come on, you know, say, very good, it's really good, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I suffered from myself when I was visiting sort of, I was going to Russia and he was, I was your product, your, your furniture. Oh, it's quite good actually. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this, this is what I would say. Um, yeah. Good. Well, um, so I'm going to remind everyone on the call, if they have a, a question for Lev, perhaps they can pop it in the chat. Um, or you could, if you're keen, you can even ask Lev yourself. Um, and I'll ask um, one, one question whilst people are having a think, Lev, is um, we talked about you helping businesses along their journey, but do, do businesses come to you with a very specific problem, especially now what with Brexit and COVID? I mean, do people, can people contact you and say, you know, I'm, 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 having, I'm having a problem with X, Y, Z? Yes, of course, yeah. And, and, and my role would be, obviously, I, I, I don't know everything, and my role would be more to connect uh, to the right people and where they can get the up-to-date information. In some cases, that might be overseas. We did, for example, one uh, company in Hampshire uh, from, I think one of them was Belarus, the other one was uh, Poland. Uh, they have issues, certification issues. Um, yes, of course, yeah. Um, on, online, too, there's a lot of information, uh, for example, about commodity codes, etc. You know, uh, but if comments can get in touch with me, I would be more than happy to, uh, to speak to them. Yeah. Right. Well, as we said, we will be circulating less details plus um, a number of links for everybody. Um, after the after after we finish 
Um, so Lev, I haven't had any questions. Um, so I will just give people another minute, but I'm going to just um, mention a couple of events that we've got coming up next before I let people go. Um, so we've got uh, another Your Questions Answered session in September, and we'll send you the details of, of what that will be about. Um, I did want to mention that we have a second Export Leaders Peer Network starting in October. So this is a brilliant opportunity to join with 10 other exporters or would-be exporters and um, to meet for a period of about six months. Um, it's facilitated by Pete Jenkins of Gamification Plus, who's one of the DIT exporting champions. And as you know, the, the way that peer support works is you'll be helping each other um, with, on the journey, uh, on the export journey. Um, the first six months network has just finished with fantastic uh, feedback. Um, so we'll share that with you, but we have got a second six month group starting. It's all free. Um, I think they meet every couple of weeks to start with and then it, it moves to once a month. So it's a really good opportunity um, and a great way of, of creating a bit of a support network for yourself. Um, we also have a very good um, panel event coming up in November on global marketing. So if you are looking at how to be found and also how to be found with the right stuff um, so thinking about, you know, the culture of the of the company that you want to, the country that you're looking at, um, then that would be a great panel event for you to come to. So we will send you the details of that as soon as that's live. So um, I haven't had any more questions left. So obviously we've covered everything. So yeah, it was very comprehensive, obviously. There's this one thing I wanted to mention, uh, Sarah, which is really quite important and this is sort of easily uh, overlooked, is this the trust element. And uh, and I will give it an, an example because it, it happened to me, really. Uh, at the company that I was working as export manager, uh, I was going to go to Russia uh, because we thought and I thought there was good potential there for quite expensive furniture and we had sold some there but there wasn't repeat business and uh, I was very lucky because the, the owner of the business who was the chairman was quite open-minded uh, because some people they was oh Russia you don't know he said okay Lev you know if you want to go you go there I said I will go and see the people there and I made appointments with the main sort of chains of showrooms there not through distributors but see them and then he asked me one question. He said, Lev, it's all very well, you're going to, can you trust them? I said, I will see, I don't know. I've got to see them. I haven't seen them yet. It was fine, okay. I went there and I went to, over a week, really. I went to uh, Moscow, St. Petersburg and Yekaterinburg. And, uh, and I went to see these showrooms. I saw so quite high up people and they were very well dressed, very well presented. The showrooms were, out of this world, very well presented, very tasteful, very expensive. And I got on quite well with them and, you know, and then I, I spent quite a bit of time and speaking to them. And I said, well, look, you know, you can be honest with me. We sold to you in the past. We didn't see repeat business. I'm quite new. I want to get things right. What can I do to help you and to help myself? Because I want to sell more. This is a good product you can sell. And they said, well, you know, you, um, you haven't really fulfilled all the orders in time. You haven't let us know, you know, when it was going to come. And there was a lot of problems like that. Whenever we contacted you, you were more sort of, you know, quite dismissive me, not me in person, but the company. And I said, okay, I can get that right. And, uh, and then also he said, well, your people always thought that they know best because we are Russia and we wouldn't know. We know our market. I said, okay, I'm, I'm learning. I was really learning on the, on the job there, listening to him. And then also he, he said, we don't know if we can trust you. And suddenly it, it sort of binged on, on my head. My own chairman asked me the same question. Can you trust them? And of course, from their side, they don't know if they can trust us. 
because we know ourselves, we are trustworthy. We never sort of, you know, we deliver on time. We do our best, for example, for your company, but they don't know you. So the reason I'm mentioning that it's really quite important to, 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 to try to remedy that and get that across, gain that trust. And, and, and then business will come. And then we did very well in Russia. We did very well. And that became a more sort of maintenance sort of accounts for, for me. In other words, I would go say, every six months, see them, say hello and you know, listen to them. And then, so that's really important to, to, to get right from the beginning relationship that's a very good um note and a very good point to end on lev thank you because and even i mean that's an example of meeting people in person but even when you yeah. are marketing globally yeah. um it's very important to get it right so that the audience trust your brand and 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 it's appropriate for them and resonate resonates with them so a big thank you to lev denker my pleasure CIT and um, a big thank you to all of you for, for attending and for Brighton Hove City Council for supporting these um, from Brighton with Love series and we will be in touch very so shortly with some the next sessions that are coming up so hope to see you all again soon thank you thank, thank you. you bye